Yeah, hi there, D, and this is Michael, and I am the founder, owner, and the materials writer for all of your lessons at the Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. So you completed an independent writing practice test at my website, and I just read it. And one thing, your vocabulary is absolutely incredible. It's almost too high for the TOEFL. Uh, that's how incredible your vocabulary is. So you definitely have very precise uh, academic vocabulary to help explain your ideas. So I read your essay. I'm going to put you right now at 375 out of 5, 24 points out of 30. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this essay and do some error correction with you so you can see different kinds of changes that you can make in your writing in order to strengthen it. Okay, let's take a look at our first paragraph. So you see, although there are cultural and ideological differences toward the definition of civilization, the ultimate goal of civilization is to have an egalitarian society in which everybody feels safe and valued Yeah, I'm going to get rid of the as well as and just say that. This is simpler. So everybody feels safe and valued and has access to feasible, affordable. I'm going to say here a feasible because a feasible refers to health care system. So system is a countdown. Okay. You see, however, we cannot deny that the invention of the internet defeats the purpose. I'm going to say defeats these Let's maybe use the word goals here because you're referring back to the goal of civilization, right? Or maybe we use the word aims, which is a synonym. So we cannot deny that the invention of the internet and internet's capitalized defeats these aims by depriving critical thinking abilities. Uh, how about by depriving humans, maybe of their critical thinking abilities, by providing, I'm going to put here a seedbed for cyberbullying and giving disjointed information on disease. So those are some slight changes I would make in the introduction. The good thing is you have a very specific thesis. Now, maybe even if you wanted to, you do this at the end, you can see which is why I agree. I'm just putting that in there because that connects it back to the uh, question here. So do you agree or disagree with the following statement, right? Now let's take a look at the intro. Let's see what we're doing here. So you've got 91 words. I think overall, though, you have a very developed essay. Let's see what we're doing with here. You got 564 words in this essay. Okay, let's take a look at your second paragraph. I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to put an idea right before deprives here. So 
some Florence's So the Internet Influence Society negatively, because it deprives the critical thinking abilities, because you have citizens here, right? So by providing misleading information in order to generate traffic to the blogs. Very specific, I like how you're focusing around this one idea. So, human beings' brains I'm going to make this plural possessive here. So, human beings' brains, so because when you have a plural possessive word, you want to put the apostrophe after the S, not before. So, human beings' brains are designed for not I'm going to take this and get rid of this and say are not designed for thinking, according to a noted cognitive psychologist. Okay, so in this case, not, you can look at it as an adverb, and it's common to put the adverb between the auxiliary verb here and the main verb, so that's why I made that change. Now, this is important. After it says, according to a noted cognitive psychologist, this is where you need to stop the sentence. What you have here is a comma splice, so you don't want to do this. This is an error that you need to stop. So you can put a semicolon or a period here. I'm going to put a semicolon. Thinking is always unreliable and slow compared to vision and hearing. Maybe you might want to put this. I'm going to connect both of these sentences together here in as much as thinking is always unreliable and slow compared to vision and hearing. People are... I'm going to say often to avoid an overgeneralization there. People are often just too indolent. Uh, to analyze, you want to use a verb here. So people are just too indolent to analyze the logics behind an opinion made by dissident. Uh, that is the point. You have we're notorious internet bloggers step in and lead the readers by their noses. Since a blogger's intention is so elusive, people tend to believe what they want to believe instead of what they should believe. Very good sentence there. For nearly two decades of primary, secondary, and tertiary education, we keep up the masquerade of educated scholars and give up one of the most prodigious potentials of human beings, critical thinking. It is so pathetic that this problem crops up in the wake of the exponential increase of the internet penetration rate. Okay, now part of what I'm, I'm going to give you a suggestion is, I, I mean, this is something I don't really say to every student here, but sometimes you, you want to be a little simpler with the vocabulary that you're using. Your vocabulary is so high level. Uh, this, is a, this is a very simple piece of writing. This is an independent type writing task, and you want to make sure that you're communicating in a, you know, a, a fairly simple and easy fashion. So some of the vocabulary you're using it's almost getting in the way of, of the ideas that you're trying to say. So you, you don't have to be so complicated with the vocabulary with this type of writing. So maybe that's my message I'm giving to you here. Um, okay, we'll go to our next paragraph here. Okay, in this paragraph... Um, I'm going to add the internet there, capitalized internet. So the internet is a C bit of cyberbullying. 
And I'm going to tie this back to the question, thereby further impacting negatively. So what we're doing is we're just tying these topic sentences back to the purpose here. So the internet has had negative effects on civilization and you 100% agree with that based on what you're writing, right? Okay, so the internet is a seabed of cyberbullying, thereby further impacting civilization negatively. If somebody thinks cyberbullying is just... I'm going to use a gerund here, not an infinitive. It's just using dirty words or coarse language. Um, I'm going to change this to he or she should rethink I'm going to change it to people. So if people think cyberbullying is just using dirty words or coarse language, Again is too informal here. You're using an imperative sentence, and that's kind of a sentence shift from what you're doing, so that's why I rewrote this. So if people think cyberbullying is just using dirty words or coarse language, they should rethink those beliefs. I'm afraid that this they should rethink this belief. I'm afraid that this opinion has, you want to say been, has been out of date for centuries. Cyberbullying is something that dismantles every piece of a soul by frigging no, I don't I don't think I'm using this. You're using uh, maybe a translation dictionary, maybe a computer or something. So I'm going to rewrite this part. say maybe by attacking a person's character. So the persons bullied by the internet users are always considered as villains. However, the bully's indifference, selfishness, and insulting remarks are never thought of as aberrant behavior. This achingly traumatized experience could pose a profound influence on, on the victims who went to extreme strength to put themselves together. The internet is building a world Maybe use something like this, cause effect here, consequently, in which hierarchy is distributed by the ability to blame others on moral grounds. And that is something exactly opposite I would probably say something like that. That is something exactly the opposite to the social moral rules in civilization.
Your next paragraph. So in addition to the damage on thinking ability and mental sanity, very good transition sentence here. I like that. So right in the beginning here, you're tying back to paragraphs two and three by saying thinking ability and mental sanity. Then you have the internet provides disjointed information and in healthcare, which puts, I'm going to say which puts human lives At risk is probably a better way to say that. Where I come from, people still think that eating eggplants cures all sorts of cancer, including small lung cell cancer, which is one of the most aggressive types. And I'm going to put a comma here because uh, lung cell cancer, that's pretty specific, so this information is adding to that idea. Uh, as a healthcare professional, I used to be a social media platform blogger who wrote healthcare articles on a weekly basis to criticize I'm going to say the disjointed information on cancer treatment. However, the number of my followers plummeted significantly after a few months. One of my friends told me she couldn't understand what I was writing. All she wanted to know was what fruits or vegetables she could eat to cure cancer. Since eating is the simplest thing in the world, almost everybody can do that. The internet exaggerates the benefits of eating, which puts risk to people. You want to say here are. Why is that? Because you have people. So it puts risk to people who are in impeding danger of not having medical treatment. This is one of the criteria of uncivilization. Okay, so I think that's pretty good there. In your final paragraph, we have, therefore, by providing, I'm going to put the article here, a lopsided view. Notice the word view. This is the key. If you have a singular count noun, right, you, you, you want to put some kind of noun marker there, so either a and or the. So you have bullying innocent people. We need to make this parallel a little bit better here. So, and under... I'm going to say under treating disease, the internet has built this is a problem. You're using here have plus the past participle. We're using what's called present perfect tense here. So has built a dystopia just to make society even more uncivilized. As a result. going to go back to this question. I, I strongly agree that the internet say something like this. I'm trying to rephrase it a little bit. So as a result, I strongly agree that the internet uh, has had harsh effects on our way of life in society. Let's read the essay one more time, paragraph by paragraph. I may make a few more connections, a few more corrections. So although there are cultural and ideological differences toward the definition of civilization, the ultimate goal of civilization is to have an egalitarian society in which everybody feels safe and valued and has access to a feasible, affordable, and efficient health care system. However, we cannot deny that the invention of the Internet defeats these aims by depriving humans of their critical thinking abilities, providing a seedbed for cyberbullying, 
and giving disjointed information on disease, which is why I agree that the Internet has had negative effects on our way of life. First of all, the Internet influences society negatively because it deprives the critical thinking abilities of citizens by providing misleading information in order to generate traffic to the blogs. Human beings' brains are not designed for thinking, according to a noted cognitive psychologist. Inasmuch as thinking is always unreliable and slow compared to vision and hearing, people are often just too indolent to analyze the logic behind an opinion made by a dissident. That is the point where notorious internet bloggers step in and lead the readers by their noses. Since the blogger's intention is so elusive, people tend to believe what they want to believe, instead of what they should believe. For nearly two decades of primary, secondary, and tertiary education, we keep up the masquerade of educated scholars and give up one of the most prodigious potentials of human beings, critical thinking. It is so pathetic that this problem crops up in the wake of the exponential increase of internet penetration rate. Secondly, the internet is a seedbed of cyberbullying, thereby further impacting civilization negatively. If people think cyberbullying is just using dirty words or coarse language, they should rethink this belief. I'm afraid that this opinion has been out of date for centuries. Cyberbullying is something that dismantles every piece of a soul by attacking a person's character, making him or her drench in shame. The persons bullied by the internet users are always considered as villains. However, the bullies' indifferent selfishness and insulting remarks are never thought as are never thought, I'm gonna say are never thought of as aberrant behavior. Actually, don't worry about it. Disregard that comment. This achingly traumatized experience could pose a profound influence on the victims who went to extreme strength to put themselves together. The Internet is building a world, consequently, in which hierarchy is distributed by the ability to blame others on moral grounds. That is something exactly the opposite to the social and moral rules in civilization. Okay, the last one. In addition to the damage on thinking ability and mental sanity, the Internet provides disjointed information on health care, which puts human lives at risk. Where I come from, people still think that eating eggplants cures all sorts of cancer, including small cell lung cancer, which is one of the most aggressive types. Now this, you probably should have said that this information was spread on the internet and people, that's where they got it, and then that relates back to the argument you're trying to make. So you didn't quite make that connection there. As a healthcare professional, I used to be a social media platform blogger who wrote healthcare articles on a weekly basis to criticize the disjointed information on cancer treatment. However, the number of my followers plummeted significantly after a few months. One of my friends told me she couldn't understand what I was writing. All she wanted to know was what fruits probably could make poor or what fruits or vegetables she could eat to cure cancer. Since eating is the simplest thing in the world, almost everybody can do that. The internet exaggerates the benefits of eating, which puts risk to people who are in impeding danger of not having medical treatment. This is one of the criteria of uncivilization. Therefore, by providing a lopsided view of events, bullying innocent people and under-treating disease, the internet has built a dystopia just to make this society even more uncivilized. As a result, I strongly agree that the internet has had harsh effects on our way of life in society. And there it is. Now there's one more thing I want to do here in this video. The last thing I want to do here is this, this one paragraph I'm going to rewrite this and I'm going to show you how to create a little bit more unified type organization and one which explicitly addresses the writing task. Right, so let's compare. Here's what you said. 
In addition to the damage on thinking ability and mental sanity, the Internet provides disjointed information on health care which puts human lives at risk. Where I come from, people still think that eating eggplants cures all sorts of cancer, including small cell lung cancer, which is one of the most aggressive types. As a healthcare professional, I used I used to be a social media platform blogger who wrote healthcare articles on a weekly basis to criticize the disjointed information on cancer treatment. However, the number of my followers plummeted significantly after a few months. One of her friends told me she couldn't understand what I was writing. All she wanted to know was what fruits or vegetables she could eat to cure cancer. Since eating is the simplest thing in the world, almost everybody can do that. The internet exaggerates the benefits of eating, which puts risk to people who are in an impeding danger of not having medical treatment. This is one of the criteria of uncivilization. Okay, so that paragraph. Now let's compare that to this one. This is your paragraph, but I'm trying to make it more focused around the idea of the internet. In addition to the damage on thinking ability and mental sanity, the internet provides inaccurate information on health care which puts human lives at risk. For example, a couple weeks back I was checking my email and I saw a message that told readers that they could lose weight, eat all the food they wanted, and did not have to exercise if they took this one pill. Of course, as a healthcare professional, I know that there is no research to support that assertion. In contrast, these readers need to know that reducing the number of calories that they eat, making healthier food choices, and exercising several days a week will help them to reach their weight loss goals. Therefore, this example shows that the internet can exaggerate the benefits of certain things, which puts people at risk who are in impeding danger of not having medical treatment, and this kind of misleading information can affect our civilization negatively. So what can you learn here from this? I think you want to be a little more specific in the example that you give, right? And try to develop it. You see all these words I spent focusing on this message I saw? I just made it up out of my head. I mean, I did see this at some point in my life. I can't remember when, but... The main thing is, is the example that you give needs to help illustrate the argument you're trying to make. You talked about the eggplant thing, but didn't connect it to the fact that people read this information online using the internet. Right? So you needed to kind of explicitly make that connection. So this paragraph is a little more unified than yours. Now notice too is my vocabulary is a little bit simpler than what you're using. And I think sometimes with vocabulary, you're, you're kind of going, you're doing too much with your academic uh, vocabulary. You don't have to be so complicated. But just remember, keep your paragraphs unified. Right? Now, I'm going to put you the score here, uh, 375 or 24 points out of 30. So I think overall, you have a pretty strong organization. However, sometimes it's difficult to understand the connection of your ideas. That refers to the eggplant example that you gave there. You have some problems with sentence formation and word choice, right? And you actually have incredible vocabulary. No problem there at all. So that's why I gave you the score that I did. All right, and thank you for completing this writing practice test.